Google Earth is a free software program that allows the user to fly over a virtual globe viewing the Earth through high-resolution satellite images. The program also features many data layers as information sources, including points of interest, roads, bus stops, and 3D buildings. Google Earth also enables the user to create annotated maps and to import personal spatial data. This presentation illustrates how to create a map with annotations in Google Earth, including place marks, paths, and polygons. It will also show how annotations can be customized through icons, images, and videos. This image displays the main window of Google Earth with some labeled features and panels. In this presentation, the focus will be on buttons for adding map annotations such as place marks. Also, the Places panel organizes customized map annotations. The 3D viewer in this example shows a place mark indicating the location of the Griffin Stadium on the UF main campus in Gainesville. This presentation explains how to add annotations through customized place marks, paths, and polygons. The toolbar above the 3D viewer contains three buttons that open tools for creating a place mark, a path, and a polygon. These can all be customized upon generation. Before generating any of these map annotations, one needs to zoom in to the area of interest. There are two methods for navigating to the area of interest, using Google Earth navigation controls or entering a geographic search term or coordinates into the free text field of the search panel. Created annotations will be added to the Places panel. If several annotations are added in one project, it is convenient to organize them in folders. To create a folder, right-click an existing folder in the Places panel. This opens a new folder dialog box. Next, type in the name of the new folder in the dialog box, such as Demo in this example. The new folder is then added to the Places panel. After this step, New place marks, paths, and polygons can be directly created within this folder, or existing annotations can be selected and dragged into the folder to organize the Google Earth project. Annotation folders as well as individual annotations can be saved on a local computer in the KMZ file format. This example shows how an annotation folder is exported. A KMZ file can be loaded into any Google Earth project or be handled by other GIS software, such as ArcGIS. Place marks are used to mark a point location on the map, such as a palm tree. To add a place mark, click the Place Mark button in the toolbar. This places a place mark in the map center. One can move the place mark's location by clicking and dragging the icon, or typing a latitude and longitude into the new place mark dialog box. In the dialog box, the name for the place mark can be specified in the name field. In this example, a place mark for a cabbage palm tree on the campus of the Fort Lauderdale Research and Education Center is created. Its position is given in geographic coordinates with decimal degrees. The coordinate system for 2D position input in the dialog box can be set in the Google Earth Tools Options menu. In this case, we set the coordinate system and readout format to decimal degrees prior to clicking the place mark button. All annotations in Google Earth can be customized in several ways. This includes style and color of the map symbol, as well as content of the pop-up balloon. For a place mark, a user can also pick from a selection of icons by clicking on the icon button on the top right corner of the dialog window. In this example, a tree icon is chosen. The dialog box can be used to type in a description for the place mark in the description field. This will be displayed when a user clicks on the place mark. In our example, we explained in the description that Sable Palm is an alternative name for Cabbage Palm. The result of this customization can be shown to the right. Google Earth balloons can be customized using HTML. One can add font sizes, styles, colors, links, tables, images, and videos into balloons by including it as HTML in the description. Next, We'll examine how to add links, images, and videos to the balloons of the Cabbage Palm placemark. Let's start with a link. 
To add a link, select the text in the description field, which should be linked to the website. Click on the Add Link button. Then insert the URL to the website into the URL field. This automatically generates the HTML code with the embedded link. In this example, the link directs the user to the FLRC vegetation map. The last image shows the balloon containing the new link. To embed an image, choose a place mark you have already created. Click into the description where the image HTML code should be inserted. Then, click the Add Image button in the Properties dialog box. Copy and paste the image URL into the text field. In our example, the URL references an online photo of a cabbage palm tree. After clicking OK, the HTML code showing the image is inserted into the description window. The display of the image can be customized through additional attributes. In this example, since the original is quite large, we set the width of the image to display in the balloon at 200 pixels. This is shown in the HTML code on the bottom. This image illustrates what the pop-up balloon looks like when the user clicks on the place marks icon, or the hyperlink name in the places panel. The text with the hyperlink and the image of the cabbage palm tree is shown. A few steps are required to embed a YouTube video into an annotation balloon in Google Earth. This involves copying and pasting code from the YouTube video's web page into the description field. The necessary steps will be shown within a video on the next slide. This video will illustrate all the steps in Google Earth described earlier. As you can see, the globe is zoomed in to the area around the Fort Lauderdale Research and Education Center. To organize the newly added map annotations, we create a new folder. And since the coordinate system and format of the location information that we are given for the new palm tree that we want to map is given in decimal degrees, we want to make sure that the readout option is also set to decimal degrees. And this is confirmed here. Next, we add a place mark, which is by default centered in the map, and we can move it around freely. And if we know the coordinates of that point, we can also enter them here, which is the case with this palm tree. We can change the symbol to tree and also add a description, also known as sable palm. Furthermore, we can give it a name and this is our place mark and that's what the balloon looks like. Next we want to add a URL to an external website so we can invite the user for example to visit the FLRC vegetation map website select the last portion and the complete HTML code is shown here. Furthermore, we want to add an image and we enter the URL to the image and we can specify here the width of the image when it's displayed in the balloon. And we can click the link to the external FLRC vegetation map, which opens in Google Earth. Next, we want to add a link to a YouTube movie in the balloon, 
To illustrate that, I make a copy of that existing place mark and I remove the image here to make some space in the balloon. And I need to actually visit the YouTube website of that video. Right click, say copy embed code and paste that in the description window. When clicking on the place mark icon, the video can be directly played in the balloon. Stephen Brown, Lee County Extension agent here in beautiful Southwest Florida. Today, the subject is how not to prune a cabbage palm. To add a polygon, click the Add Polygon button at the top left of your map. A new polygon dialog box appears, and the mouse cursor changes to a rectangular shape. A new node can be added to the polygon with a mouse click. This is illustrated in the left image where a polygon is drawn around the plant garden at the Fort Lauderdale Research and Education Center. In the New Polygon dialog box, type in a name for the polygon, such as Plant Garden. The balloon associated with the polygon can be customized in the description tab through text and HTML code as illustrated for annotations, for example, by adding links and images. In this example, we leave the description field blank. Click on the Style Color tab to set parameters for the display of boundary lines and the polygon area. In this example, we chose the polygon to be filled and outlined. Set the opacity of the polygon to 50% while keeping the boundary lines completely opaque. Google Earth allows the user to specify the altitude of a polygon above the surface of the Earth, above sea level, or above the bottom of major bodies of water. All the settings can be found in the Altitude tab. In this example, an altitude of 10 meters relative to the ground is assigned to the polygon. Furthermore, the box is checked to extend the sides of the polygon to the ground. This gives the appearance of a three-dimensional object. Using this option, the polygon icon in the Places panel appears three-dimensional as well. To create a path, click the Add Path button at the top left of the map. A new path dialog appears. The cursor changes and nodes can be added through a mouse click. One can also click and drag to create frequent nodes. This makes a smoother path as illustrated along a curved street in the figure. This example shows how to create a path that marks the route from the Griffin Stadium to Smathers Library on the UF Gainesville campus. In the dialog box, one can add a path name and description in the same manner as shown earlier in place marks and polygons. This figure shows both the final created path and the newly added path icon in the Places panel. To play a tour of the path and fly along its route, click the Play Tour button. This video illustrates the fly-through between the stadium and the Smethers library along the path. The tour is played with the 3D Buildings layer turned on. This layer shows for selected regions in the world 3D models of buildings, monuments, fountains, bridges, towers, canopy and other features. The tour function clearly smoothens the path followed by the camera and avoids sudden changes in flight direction. This presentation introduced the different types of map annotations supported in Google Earth including place marks, paths, and polygons. It was illustrated how map annotations can be customized through icons and selected symbology parameters. Further, it was shown how annotation balloons can be expanded with HTML code that points to images and videos. Lastly, the presentation demonstrated a fly-through example along a customized path in a 3D building environment.